Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. As last night in your message, before you taught the study, you were referencing the shooting that took place in Nashville. And, and you know, it, it all begins with, it's not gun control, it's, it, it's, not, it's none of that. It really begins with the church, the Word of God being preached, the pulpit. And recently I came across, we came across a video that you can probably understand, well, we can never understand what happened, but pulpits have been corrupted. And this is what's spreading throughout the United States. And, and, uh, and no wonder we see the fruit of these things take place because of this. And, and, uh, and I want the audience to tune in. The video is going to be shown to them in a, in, in a, in a few moments saying drag is holy. Yeah. So what I'd like to do, Pastor, before I get your feedback is we would like to take the time. It's a 44 second video. If you can please watch this video. Drag is holy. There has been an assault on the rights of drag performers in this country, and we must call out the hypocrisy and the injustice. Jesus called himself a mother hen longing to gather up her chicks. Gender is a construct, you see. And if Jesus can be a mother hen, then you can dress in drag. I've even heard it said that Jesus was, and humanity is, God in drag. So let me say this again for those of you in the back. Drag is holy. So we see the video, and uh, it's this drag pastor. Quote, unquote. Quote, unquote referencing Jesus as a mother hen and, and just giving excuses for this downgraded, downplaying pulpit pastoral office. As a senior pastor, what are your thoughts of this? Well, obviously this is a corruption of scripture. It most certainly is a misunderstanding of the intent of Christ using an illustration to reveal his concern, love, and, and uh, protective uh, um, instincts towards, I'll use the word instincts, towards uh, the people of Israel. He, he's letting them know that he would have, um, he, he is like the, the mother hen who, when the hawk is circling above, ready to, to take one of hers, that she is willing to give her life. Well, he's saying even as. So it's a metaphor. He most certainly did not uh, make that a, uh, a picture of him but rather a picture of his heart. As a mother hen, it's the way he puts it, he, she protects her brood, even so. And so the point he's making has nothing to do with the, with, uh, the, the perversion of, of a man dressing as a woman and acting out as if he is a woman. You know, this is really a, a, a violation of nature itself. Paul in Romans chapter 1 speaks of that. Mm -hmm. He speaks of the corruption of the nature. He says uh, the women, women uh, desire other women and men desire other men. He's speaking in terms of them um, not acting in the natural order in that God created man to be married to a woman so that they might have what is called a sacred or holy matrimony and that they would produce godly children. That's God's intent. And so when man takes the place of God, when man begins to say, I am God, even as Lucifer did when he said, I shall be as the Most High. Well, man's corrupted human nature has a tendency of, it has a propensity of wanting to replace God uh, with, with my own desires. And that's why Jesus died on the cross, is to save us from these corrupt desires that end up with punishment, end up with judgment. And so when these people are trying to make an, um, uh, a perversion uh, into a norm, then obviously it's, it's, it's the undermining and destruction of the family as we know it. And within the first uh, nine chapters of the book of Genesis, three building blocks are established. And these are the building blocks that are intended to keep society in order and even to promote its being blessed, which is, you know, marriage, mm -hmm. and it is uh, government, you know, and the church. And these three things are in, in the first nine chapters of Genesis. And, 
and, and a faith in God and, and a holy marriage and a, an orderly government under the authority of uh, God's principles and all. That's what made um, the United States what it was in its beginning and that the lack of those things, the distortion of those things, the destruction of those things um, is what is making the craziness that we deal with right. now. And so it, it is a demonic spirit, even as I was mentioning last night, and I speak as a Christian, I speak as a pastor. This is not simply a corruption. This is a demonic movement against the foundations and the principles of, uh, of humanity as is lived out here in the United States. And so this, this individual who made that particular... Um, made that message the individual who did that is 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 actually corrupt and is making this a corrupt message right yeah and uh you know the the question that's being asked is drag holy and, and of course not you know god created men with male with male attributes and 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 the things that a male is to do we have we have uh responsibilities to live out our masculinity and and women have been created with certain feminine attributes and the two become one so we are completed by combining that what a what, that which a woman brings mm -hmm. in and that which a man brings in and then we unite those things and we become a person together we have a oneness in christ we have a oneness that is uh, demonstrated through the union the two shall become the one flesh right and so no man is capable of bringing feminine attributes into a relationship. And no woman can bring in, you know, uh, masculine attributes in terms of that which is part of their nature. They look at it, they can mock it, they can act it, they can pretend, but they cannot bring that in. Mm -hmm. They can't bring in those objects of masculinity and femininity because they can only bring in what they are. And the delusion is that you can actually just whatever I think I am, therefore I am. That's where the delusion is. Because, you know, at one time we saw that for what it is, that there is something wrong with the way they're thinking. There's something wrong with, with how they were raised or what they went through. There's this wrongness in this. And that's why Christ said, I can make you a new creation. Mm -hmm. I can heal those broken things. I have come to heal the brokenhearted. I can restore those things. I... I've come to transform you, to make you what God intended you to be. And yet these people say no. They, they, they're, as one of my professors once said, they raise their puny fists into the face of God. And they say, we shall be what we want mm -hmm. to be. We shall be like God. And that is the root of, of narcissism. Everything revolves around me, what I want. You have to redefine the way you speak to me. If I command you to call me by certain pronouns, you must do that. If you don't do that, then what you are is a bigot. And this is all nonsense. This is just psychological nonsense. And, and so the church should not, should not bear with it. We certainly don't need corrupt individuals in pulpits lying in the name of God. And so, no, um, all of this is going into the destruction of the nation that we that we live in and the churches need to awaken to this. It isn't love for me to, if you tell me you're a certain whatever, it isn't loving you by allowing you to live in a deluded world. It is love when I, when I care about you enough to tell you the truth and to try and help you to see that your way of thinking is in error. But if I don't bring to you a message that can set you free from bondage, John, mm -hmm. I'm only helping you stay in it. And again, as Christians, we must keep our eyes on Jesus, understand what true holiness is, and be in God's Word. And so thankful for a Bible teaching church, or if you guys aren't plugged into a Bible teaching church, it's so important because we have these things that are so blatant, and people are falling for it. Let me say this, and I'll close with this. If you're going to a church that doesn't teach the gospel, that doesn't teach through the Word of God, if you're going to a church with a person who thinks that those kinds of things are okay, get out of the mm -hmm. church. That is not a church. I don't know what you'd even call it. It's a perversion. Get out of it. Get out of it. I don't care if your father's a pastor there. Get out of it. Because they're, they're taking you in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Get out of it. Well, thank you, Pastor, for that. Uh, and 
and it's a sobering reminder that this is so prevalent in our nation today. And, uh, and so uh, thank you for sharing that. Just a couple of things that we have coming up this week. Uh, we have our Sunday morning services, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And you'll be given a message on, on Palm, Palm Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> on Palm Sunday. Uh, that's going to be at 8.30 and 10.45 this Sunday. Invite your friends and family to come out. And then Wednesday, it's going to be kind of cool because we're going to be demonstrated the Passover setter. And uh, we have a guest speaker that's going to come and demonstrate that for us. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then Good Friday, Friday at 7 p.m. as you'll be giving uh, a message on why is Good Friday good? Basically. Uh, and and uh, why we call it Good Friday. And then the cornerstone of everything and what we hear, John, is going to be celebrated on Easter on Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those times will be a little different. Uh, 8.30 and 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. We do have child care. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Yeah, special time of worship. Worship. It's going to be it, great. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, I can't wait. And no Easter bunnies. No, <laughs> no carrots. No, carrots, <laughs> no Easter, Easter eggs. Bunnies, no eggs. <laughs> Just Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so invite your friends and family. We have a week that's coming up that's going to be super and so invite your friends and family. Pastor, thank you so much for always sharing the truth with us here on Filtered. I would encourage you to leave your comments uh, below and, uh, and anything, questions you'd like to ask, we would love to hear from you. So thank you for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you. God bless you guys.